Welcome back to another tutorial. If this is your first time watching one of my videos, my name is Yuval and I'm a director and cinematographer based in Berlin. On this channel I create behind the scenes videos taking you through my cinematography, lighting and gear choices. So if you're interested in that, make sure you subscribe. And in this video we're talking about color grading. Specifically I'm going to show you three DCTLs that I've been using lately that help me color grade my videos and will hopefully help you too. So if you don't know what a DCTL is, it's basically like a plugin for DaVinci Resolve. The three that I'm going to show you today are completely free. However, you do need to have the studio version of DaVinci Resolve to be able to load them. So very quickly I'm going to show you how to install the DCTLs. If you already know how to do that, you can skip ahead. But let's do it very quickly. I'm going to provide a link in the description for all the DCTLs. So when you open the link, it's going to direct you to this GitHub page. And if this is looking confusing, don't worry about it. All you need to do is go to these three dots right here, press it, press download, and then save it to whichever folder you want. Then the next thing we're going to do is in DaVinci, we're going to go into file, project settings, color management, and then down here at the lookup tables, we are going to press open LUT folder and now you want to take the file we downloaded and put it in this folder. Now me personally, I created this DCTL folder inside the LUT folder just to make things more tidy and nice, but you don't have to do that. So we can basically just take our file, copy it and just move it over here. Then we want to click update lists and we are going to close the Vinci Resolve and then reopen it. If you don't do this step, you won't see the DCTL. So we have to close the program and open it again. So we're back in DaVinci and the first DCTL that I want to show you is the 6x3 matrix from Nico from Demystify.com. And the way I like to use this tool is to quickly create creative looks just like this one. I might not be the best person to explain what a color matrix is, but I'm going to try to explain it in a very broad term and I'm going to leave links down in the description for those of you who want to dive deeper. So with a color matrix, basically what we're doing is we're taking an input of RGB values and converting that into a different output of RGB values. It's a mathematical transformation where we basically say how much red, green and blue make up for the red channel, how much red, green and blue make up for the blue channel and how much red, green and blue make up the blue channel. This can be used for either technical transformations, for example, when going from one color space to another, or for creative purposes, such as this one. We can do something similar with the RGB mixer built into Resolve. So here you can see we have red, green, and blue for the red output. We have red, green, and blue for the green output, and we have red, green, and blue for the blue output. And this is essentially building out a three by three matrix. But our DCTL is not a 3x3 matrix, but it's a 6x3 matrix. That means we're getting to transform not only the red, green, and blue, but we're also getting magenta, cyan, and yellow. So this is footage from a short film that I made that is finally ready, and hopefully I can share it with all of you soon. It's now doing a festival run. It's shot on the Arri Alexa Mini, and what I have here for the first node is just a simple Rec. 709 LUT, plus some balancing, so you can see this is the log image. Now we're getting Rec. 709. And then I have just a little bit of a density adjustment and that is using the color slice tool. So this is all I have here so far, pretty basic. And now I'm going to create a new node and then I'm going to go into my effects and I'm going to search for DCTL. Now we're going to drag that into our node and now we have our list of DCTLs over here. And I'm going to search for my 6x3 matrix. And now we have these sliders that let us control how much red, green, blue, cyan, magenta, and yellow we have in each of our RGB channels. So I'm going to call this 6x3 matrix. And now let's start playing around. So when I'm using this tool, I usually don't really have a very specific agenda. I like to use this when I 
not sure really where I want to go with the image, or maybe I have a rough idea, but mainly I just like to play with the different sliders and kind of see where it gets me. Um, for this image specifically, because we have a lot of reds and yellows, I know that these sliders are gonna make the greatest impact for me, so I'm gonna focus on them, but essentially I'm gonna go over pretty much every slider uh, in this TCTL to just try to make something I like by eye. Again, I'm working very roughly. So I'm just gonna play around and let's see what we can get to. So usually the red in red, green in green, and blue in blue are going to make quite a big impact. So you can see how just this one slider really changes everything. So I'm gonna put it somewhere around here and I'm going to continue playing. And what you'll probably notice when playing around with the different sliders is that some of them sort of cancel each other out. So you kind of have to go back and forth between them and find something you like. So this is the loop we ended up with. This is before and this is after. It only took about five minutes and that's why I like this tool. Um, there's a lot of different ways, obviously, to get to the same result in DaVinci. Um, that's true with almost everything you do in Resolve. But I like this one because it's easy with the sliders and it helps me play around when I'm not sure where I want to take the image. Now, that is just getting us at a nice spot in terms of the color, but obviously I would still continue working on this image, working on the contrast, on the highlight roll-off, on the skin tones, if I'm going for a film look, I would also add grain, halation, and mess around with the textures. So this DCTL is just a nice way to quickly get somewhere in terms of the color, but it's not the finished article, obviously. Moving on to the second DCTL, this is a really fun one. So again, I'm going to create a new node, go to DCTL and drag it into my node, and I'm going to choose Field Curvature. And what this does is it adds blur to the edges of our frame. So you can see over there, this is before and this is after. Look at this corner over here, before and after. And we can see it in all of the corners basically. Just adds a very cool blur effect to the edges of the frame. And this is of course very case specific. Sometimes I would want it on certain shots, or if you wanted to imitate a vintage lens kind of feeling, you could also do that. Uh, but this is probably not something that I would use uh, on every single shot and not on any project, uh, obviously, as well. But it is a very nice creative tool um, that is pretty fun. So you can see we also have some options over there. So we can basically control the sizing and where exactly the blur occurs. We can stretch it more horizontally or vertically. We can control the strength, of course, and we can also expand uh, the mask if we wanted to. Cat's eye is also a cool slider. It's kind of hard to see on this image. I don't think we'll really be able to see, um, but it basically stretches the bokeh into sort of a cat's eye shape, which is pretty cool. We can toggle the draw blur map checkbox and then we can actually see the mask of where the blur is happening. The curve fall off slider controls how fast we're going from no blur or little blur into the full power blur. And that's mostly what you need to know for this one. In one of the links in the description, I will also provide a more in-depth explanation of every slider on this DCTL. Now the last DCTL is one that is actually implemented into the new versions of Resolve already, and it's the film density effect. And we can basically do that here on the color slice with the density and the density depth sliders, as well as the depths for saturation. Um, so these controls now exist in the color slice tools, but if you don't have the newest version of Resolve, or maybe you just want to use a simpler, easier to use slider, then we have this third DCTL, which was created by Paul Dorr, aka Bolt Avenger, a couple of years back. So let's create a new node again, go into DCTL, and go into Film Density. So as I change around the strength, you can see what's happening. We're getting this sort of darkening of the colors. They get more dense and rich. Now, something that's very important to note 
is that the way we've just used this film density tool is technically wrong. This DCTL is expecting a linear image and not a Rec. 709 one like we have here. If we use it just like this, just like we did now, you can see it, it's working. It does make our colors more dense, but it's not really behaving like it should be. And also, you can see if we pull the red, green, and blue sliders, it works kind of awkwardly. So now I'm going to show you the actual correct way to do this. And I'm going to work on a different footage just so we can maybe have more color over there so we can see it's working properly. So we have this footage also for my short film. It's shot on Ari Alexa. So all I have here is a CST taking us from log C into Rec. 709. So basically I'm just normalizing the image, taking it from log into Rec. 709. And what we need to do now in order for the film density DCTL to work properly is go from Rec. 709 into linear. So I'm going to create three nodes. In the first one, we're going to go from Rec. 709 into linear. The second one, we're going to have our DCTL. And the third one, we're going to go back from linear into Rec. 709. So let's go into our effects, search for color space transform. Let's drag that into our node. And now basically we want to go from Rec. 709 and color space, we can choose Rec. 709. And for the output gamma, we're going to go to linear. So this is looking all weird. Don't worry. This is because we're now effectively in linear. And now we want to apply the same color space transform, but just reverse it on our third node. So I'm going to copy this one and I'm going to paste it over here. And now instead of going from Rec. 709 into linear, we're going to go from linear to Rec. 709. So I'm going to change my input gamma into linear and the output gamma into Rec. 709. And if we've done this correctly, there should now be no change with these three nodes applied. Okay, now the nodes are disabled. Now they're enabled. So this is how I know that I've done this correctly going from Rec. 709 to Linear, and then Linear back to Rec. 709. So let's call this Rec. 709 to Linear, and this one is Linear to Rec. 709. So now when I apply the DCTL into this middle node, it should be working correctly. Okay, so you can see straight away, this is working as expected now. You can see how rich and saturated the colors get. And we're not getting any sort of weird artifacts. So let's push this quite heavily. And now we can test the red, green, and blue weight sliders and see if they work. So you can see if I push this all the way down, we're getting very minimal effects on the red. And if I pull this up, obviously this is too much. So let's keep it somewhere around here. And let's now go for the greens. Maybe something like this. And we can also do the same for the blues. And sometimes I will also use the low luma limiter to clean up the darker areas. So we can see as I pull this up, we are making sure the density doesn't affect the darkest areas. And by the way, if you wanna control the sliders more gently, um, you can go over the numbers and then click and drag and that's going to make finer adjustments. So before and after, let's make this bigger, before and after. And this is a bit much, of course, because the weight here is all the way up. So maybe take it down a little bit before and after you can really see we're adding this really rich, saturated film-like feeling to the image. And let's take a still here and just sort of see what the regular saturation would have given us. So if I just go into the regular saturation here, we are getting something like this. So you can see the areas that I'm saturating kind of get brighter, as opposed to this saturation, which is making things darker. And if we pull them up side by side, we can see just how much of a difference and what's happening here is we're using subtractive color 
you might have heard this term before. This is more how film works, which means we are taking away either red, green and blue to create our colors rather than adding red, green or blue, which is more of what's happening with digital. And that is a very oversimplified explanation. Again, I'm going to leave a link in the description for a very informative video on this topic of film density. So that is it for this video. Hopefully it helps you color grade your videos better. Uh, if you enjoyed the video and if you want to see more color grading or cinematography videos, make sure you subscribe and also leave a comment if you want or if you have any questions. All of the links to download the TCTLs as well as further deeper information and explanations about color matrices, subtractive saturation, and more information on the DCTLs mentioned here. It's all going to be down in the description. So thank you again for watching and I'm gonna see all of you in the next one.